Hey friends, it's Peggy Hall here, and this is my part two about wearing masks. Many of you asked about whether you should wear a mask into a grocery store or what to do if you are required to wear a mask as an employee. So I'm going to cover both of those things. First of all, I am not a lawyer. I do not give legal advice. I am a curious person, and I am a person who stands for truth and freedom. So I like to research things, and I like to share things with you that will help you elevate your health and well-being. If you want to share a video with somebody who is not quite sure whether they are supposed to wear a mask or whether they want to wear a mask, or maybe they think falsely that the mask is protecting them or protecting someone else, please go back and watch part one. I explain very clearly and very calmly and very kindly all about how the breath works and how wearing a mask actually can put your health at harm and at risk, especially your respiratory system. And if you're wearing a mask because you are trying to protect your respiratory system, then you might be doing the exact wrong thing. When I speak about masks, and I want everyone to hear this clearly, I am speaking about the cloth masks or the disposable masks that you can buy at the drugstore. I am not talking about a medical grade mask that nurses and doctors wear. I am not talking about a respirator, which actually there are some that have the ability for oxygen to come in and carbon dioxide to go out. I am not talking about the N95 mask. I am talking about the masks that people have hanging from their rear view mirror, the masks that they have in their purse, in their bag, in their pocket, the cloth masks that they put around their neck and around their chin with all the germs and then they put it back on their face. That's the mask I'm talking about. I'm not talking about a sterile surgical mask. It is unbelievable the amount of people that have wanted to argue on this point by bringing up the fact that doctors and nurses wear masks. First of all, doctors and nurses usually and normally only would wear masks when they were uh, treating a patient, when they were examining a patient, and in a surgical environment, which is sterile. When I think of all the times I went to doctor's offices, they were never wearing a mask. I never saw a nurse wearing a mask on a regular basis before this COVID episode. Now, maybe that's just me. My mother was an emergency room nurse for 40 plus years, and she never wore a mask just on the floor, only when she was treating a patient. And the masks were disposable and they were changed in between patients just as surgical gloves are. So let's just get that out of the way so that I can speak clearly and answer the people who have been asking me this question. Peggy, what do I do when I want to go into a grocery store and they're requiring a mask or I want to go into any store at, or place of business and they're requiring a mask? What do I do when I work at a place and they want me to wear a mask. So those are the things that I'm going to offer for you right here. So basically that would be if you are a customer or if you are an employee. So let's look at being a customer. This is not medical advice. This is not legal, legal advice. This is common sense advice, okay? And I know you know that, but it's amazing how people will want to poke holes into your advice on things that really have very little relevance. So first of all, you can avoid going to that store, okay? I don't wear a mask, I never have, and I don't anticipate that I will be wearing one just because someone else told me to put it on. If I'm going to wear a mask, that's my choice, my personal choice, my personal health freedom. And if I decide I want to do that, just like you can decide to do that, that is your choice. But because people have asked me for my help, that's why I want to offer this advice. So the first thing is you can simply avoid that place of business. If you don't want to get into a confrontation, if you don't want to toe the line with somebody or go toe to toe with somebody, just avoid that place. The other day I was driving by a grocery store and I saw a security guard at the front entrance with a mask on. That signaled to me that there was going to be some type of uh, restriction because I wasn't going to wear a mask. I chose not to go to that grocery store. I just wasn't in the mood for a confrontation. Now where I live, there are other places of business that 
are not requiring a mask and other grocery stores. And even the one that I go to has a sign on the door that says masks are recommended or please wear a face covering, something along those lines. I have even been into stores that say uh, face coverings. You see, they changed the language. They're not saying mask anymore. Face coverings are required. And the reason I mentioned that about the face covering and the mask is because it's language. And I'm going to have another video all about language and how that is used in certain ways to be manipulative and how you can guard against it. And I want you to share with me some of the language that you've seen and heard so that we can bring this out into the open. So now it says a face covering is required. Well, I just walk right in. And if there's nobody at the door stopping me, I just go and shop. And the place where I go, I often will see other people who don't have masks on and we kind of, um, you know, go like that and, you know, kind of see them. And oftentimes we've struck up conversations on that common ground of how we are actually engaging in healthy behaviors by allowing the free flow of oxygen. And obviously we're not coughing or sneezing on anyone. We'd be staying home if we were doing that. I also want to say people will say, well, you might be a carrier and not know it. You might have symptoms. That may be. But the fact is that the mask is designed to contain droplets that come from coughs or sneezes. Did you, you got that part. It's not just breathing the air. You don't get this from the air. It's, it's still a theory how you actually get it, but the theory is that it's through droplets, which can only be uh, put out by a cough or a sneeze, and then those droplets have to be picked up by the other person. It has to go past their mask. Then it has to go past the cilia, where the hair is in the nose, which are a defense mechanism, part of the immune system. Then that, those droplets have to get past the throat, the trachea, which also is a, a function of an immune system defense. And then it has to get into the bronchial tubes, which is another part of the immune system and has its own defenses. And then it has to get into the lungs. And even then your own immune system has to be of such a, a compromised nature that it will allow you to become sick. So that's a lot of barriers between you, your cough, your sneeze, and somebody else uh, becoming sick. Having said all that, let's get right down to the matter. I have walked into grocery stores where I have not put on a mask. I have not yet been asked to be to put on a mask. If I am asked to put on a mask, I have a couple of choices that I would do. And one choice would be to say, okay, and just keep walking. Chances are they're not going to be grab me by my arm and pull me aside and forcibly put a mask on me. So that's one opportunity or one option that I might do is just say, okay, and keep walking. And then once I get to the checkout counter, if um, you know that's another point of confrontation, then what I would say is this, I have a medical condition. And that's all you need to say. I have a medical condition. Now, personally, my medical condition is breathing. I have a medical condition which prevents me from wearing a mask. Now, I don't need to tell them that my medical, medical condition is breathing because my medical condition and my health status and your health status is protected by law. That is your privacy. It's called HIPAA regulations. I have links for you below. And the HIPAA regulation states that your medical information is private. And there are only very certain circumstances under which it can be shared. So your health status is your private business. You do not need to tell the cashier. You do not need to tell the store manager. All you need to do is say, I have a health condition. And for me, health condition is breathing. The second law, I'm not a lawyer, I will put the links for you to research. The second law that people are speaking about is called the ADA. That is the American with Disabilities Act. And I read this quite uh, intently and with a great deal of curiosity. And every time there was a definition, I clicked through to read the next definition. And you can do all of that as well. But to summarize, and I may not be using the exact legal terms, but to summarize, a store, a place of business, whether it's, pub, whether it's public or private, private entities are also required to adhere to these same laws 
they may not refuse you service. And specifically, places like restaurants, bakeries, um, hair salons, nail salons, grocery stores, all of these that would be considered you know, public places, even though they are private businesses, but they are offering public services or services and goods to the public, they cannot discriminate against serving you based on your disability. Now you have to say, what is a disability? You can look at the legal terms below. To, just to summarize in my own words, I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> I'm a curious individual and I know you are too. To summarize, a disability is something that can be recognized. It doesn't even have to be established by a medical professional. It's just that you are recognized that you have this disability that prevents you from um, normal ways of living. So if this place of business is requiring you to wear a mask, which apparently is becoming a normal way of living, and your medical condition, which is breathing, prevents you from participating in wearing a mask, all you need to say is, I am protected against discrimination and you cannot refuse my service based on ADA regulations. Now, I know there will be those because they already have said these things to me. Well, you're going to have to have a lawsuit and you'll have to get a doctor's note and all of that may be true. That's not where I'm going here, friends. What I'm offering to you is a simple phrase that you can offer to a store manager, a cashier, the owner of a business to explain very simply and very clearly why you are not wearing a mask. It is highly unlikely this is going to escalate to a lawsuit and a doctor's note and you know law enforcement coming. If they refuse you service, you can follow up with the ADA and file um, a complaint. That's absolutely your right to do so. And you can let them know that you're going to file a complaint. I know some people have called the ADA right on their phone, right there in the place of business. That's your choice. I'm not recommending you do or don't do that. All of this is for you to choose. Your health is your responsibility. My health is my responsibility. I get to choose what's right for me. You get to choose what's right for you. I just wanted to let you know what I would do in this case if somebody refused me entry. There is a part in the ADA that says private clubs, and I have not found a definition, private clubs can refuse you. So people have said, well, what about Costco? Costco is a private club. Yes, it is. And what I have done is I have called Costco, and I will leave that for you here, the exact things that I said to Costco. And chances are Costco and other places of business are implementing these masks because they are misled. They erroneously believe that there is a public order that requires you to wear a mask. And at least where I live in Orange County, and in the state of California, each county is different, but in Orange County and at the State Department of Health, there is no requirement to wear a mask. It's actually the opposite. It, in fact, it states that you should not wear a mask if you're not comfortable. This is in California. And it also states that wearing a mask may increase your risk of infection if you are not doing the other health behaviors. When people wear a mask, they tend to touch their face more frequently. And as I explained in video one, if you would go back and watch that, all of the reasons why wearing a mask will actually make you sicker. You can hear I'm very passionate about this. Before I talk about what to do um, as an employee, I wanna share something with you because this was so astonishing to me. This came in my mailbox. Now. Oh, I put the X on it. It did not come with the X, but I was so absolutely astounded by this. And it came from the Orange County Board of Supervisors. And it actually came from my supervisor of my district. So I immediately called the office and there are some other health behaviors on the back. This to me is so alarming and it causes so much fear and panic. It shows clearly a senior citizen <laughs> wearing a mask, Senior citizens often have um, more difficulty breathing just because uh, it's called immunosenescence 
I'm not sure of the pronunciation, but just as you age, your immune system doesn't function as clearly. So she's harming her immune system out in public. People are taking this to mean out while you're walking in the park, while you're riding your bicycle, while you're driving in your car. I have seen people wearing a mask in all those situations. This is completely um, egregious. This is uh, invalid. What what they are stating is, is actually does not have any lawful backing in California. So I called the office and I explained how alarming this was. Now, if they had said, we recommend you wear a mask if you feel like it, or for those who prefer, you could, but this giant flyer, and that's why I put the X on it. And um, I actually requested that they send out a replacement flyer explaining that this was just a recommendation and not a law because it's extremely misleading. I, I just still am appalled by this. That's why these stores and shops believe that they are supposed that they are supposed to protect themselves, protect their business, protect their employees, and protect their customers um, by requiring that they wear masks. So let's talk about being an employee. Let's say that you work at a store that for the last two months was fine, and suddenly, at the end of the typical flu season, they're requiring you to wear a mask. So you have a couple of options here. These are your options. You need to explore what's right for you. If you go back and watch video one, part one, I have all of the links to all of the medical data, all of the scientific evidence that shows that wearing a mask is harmful to your health. Why in the world would an employer want to put your health at risk? So I would say number one is educate your employer. Send him the video, send him the links or her. Um, you could print those out. You could have a conversation with your employer and just start by educating and ask the question, why? Why are you requiring masks? And they may say, well, we have to. And you can say, well, under what regulation? And if you dig deeper, you can uncover the foundation or what it is that they are actually basing this um, desire or request for you to wear a mask. So number one is ask these questions, help to educate, just explore what's going on there. And that may take care of it right then and there. Secondly, if they do say, oh, we're aware of that, but we're doing safety precautions. Basically, if they don't want to follow common sense and they want to put your health at risk, kind of like the grocery store, you can decide, do I still want to work there or not? And maybe by you putting forth your resignation, they may rethink that. And if most of the employees put forth their resignation or have a walkout, if you will, maybe you can organize something with the rest of your fellow employees and say, hey, we are not going to do this. And here are the reasons why. Wearing a mask will make us sick. Wearing a mask harms your health. And explain those things. Maybe your employer would be more willing to listen to reason. Now, the next part again is related to your medical condition, which is breathing and the ADA. Now, you, I recommend that you explore in your own state what are these regulations regarding how the employer must accommodate you for reasonable accommodations in your work. So if you say that you are unable to wear a mask because you get carbon dioxide toxicity, which I explained in part one, or that you have headaches, which is a part of that, and you can't think clearly, and you're fatigued, and you have difficulty breathing, and you have heart palpitations, and your blood pressure rises, and you feel like you're gonna pass out. All of those things happen when you are wearing uh, some device that is obscuring your intake of oxygen. You can let your employer know that you would like to have reasonable accommodations for a different um, position. So let's say that you work with the public and there might be a different job where you could work alone in the office or you could work in the storeroom or you could be uh, driving and doing deliveries. So I would speak to your employer and see if there is a reasonable accommodation that can be made for you. And I believe that if enough people speak out against this harmful message and i am going to do future videos friends i'm so glad for everything that you've been asking me for and it's not just about the mask it is not about the mask in fact none of this is about the mask 
It is about the government overstepping and overreaching and prompting and causing people to do these health behaviors that are in not in their best interest. It's about compliance without thinking. And it is also very visible that you can see who is wearing a mask and who is not. So it's also divisive. I'm going to leave this for another video. I just wanted to share with you what you can say and what you can do when you are a customer or you are an employee who is being required to wear a mask. So thank you everybody for tuning in as a health educator for over 20 years, a college instructor, someone who just has a curious mind. I want to bring information and inspiration and knowledge and positive encouragement to help you and your loved ones and me as well. We all want to elevate our health, well-being and our sanity right at this stage in the game. So so thank you so much. My goal is to help you live your life fully and freely. See you soon, everybody.